The story begins with Banri Tada, the protagonist who arrives late at the opening ceremony of his university's law faculty. As a result, he doesn't get a chance to talk to anyone and, in addition, he doesn't know how to get to his university. In that, he overhears some girls heading towards the same faculty, so he decides to follow them. However, he loses sight of them in a store where he spends some time buying things while the girls are leaving the store. He remains lost outside the place until he encounters Mitsuo Yanagisawa, a young man who, like him, was also following the same girls but lost their trail in the same store as him. Quickly, they become friends and head together to the university. There we learn that Yanis, as Yanjisawa prefers to be called, attended the same school his whole life but transferred due to problems with a friend. Suddenly, a taxi arrives at high speed, and a beautiful girl carrying a bouquet of roses steps out. The protagonist is surprised when the girl starts hitting him with the bouquet while congratulating him on entering the university. Before leaving, she tells him that she will always be his. The boy picks up the bouquet and starts giving roses to the passing girls to ease the situation, while Yanis, still in shock on the ground, realizes this and starts helping him. Once they are in class, Yanis explains to the proto about this girl, whose name is Coco Kava, who already has her life planned out and is quite obsessive. We can see that Yanis seems deeply by her. As they discuss this, a girl speaks to them from behind, who turns out to be Coco Kava herself. Even though Yanis doesn't believe her, she explains that she changed her plans to study with him for the next four years. Yanis, frightened, runs away and ends up throwing all his notes and the girl starts him. Left alone, the proto starts picking up all his friend's notes, and that's when Chernami Oka, another classmate, appears and helps him, becoming his friend. After leaving the faculty, the boy encounters a festival of clubs, where each group tries to force them to join. Just as the protagonist is about to be caught by the Latin dance club, he is rescued by Hayashida, a girl in her senior year at the law faculty, who says that her club doesn't f*** anyone to join and that it's their duty to help newcomers. Before leaving, she asks him to call her Rinda and our protagonist flirts with her, complimenting her lipstick, to which she gives him a kiss. As the evening falls and he's on his way home, the protagonist meets Coco, who explains that she's waiting for Yanis. At that moment, Yanis calls him on his cell phone and informs him that he's still at school. Coco overhears the conversation, so she takes the probe's phone and tells Yanis that she'll come to find him. Before leaving with the boy's phone, she returns it and acts sweet and polite towards him. After this, our protagonist watches her leave and remembers the time he was hit by a motorcycle years ago, while he was waiting for someone. The next day, we see a dream of our protagonist where he f off a cliff with his eyes blindfolded. In that, he is found by someone, but then the image of Coco comes to his mind and he wakes up thinking about her. A week passes and one day at the university, he sees Coco laughing alone at her phone, so he approaches and asks what she's doing. Then he shows her photos of her and Yanis when they were children and asks if she has seen him because he's been avoiding her. At that moment, we see Yanis passing behind her, making signals to our protagonist not to say anything. The boy tries to distract her, but she still notices and starts chasing Yanis. Inside the university, she can't catch the guy, so she asks our protagonist to find out his schedule, offering to pay him. However, since he doesn't want to, she tells him it was just a joke and she goes to her class. However, when Coco leaves, the boy overhears everyone talking about her and how her parents have a lot of money. Then we see that Rinda is standing behind him, observing everything that's happening. Days pass and we see our boy at his home giving food to his friend Yanis, since his parents don't give him any money because he was transferred to another university to get away from Coco. The protagonist says to him that he feels bad for the girl because she hasn't made any friends and nobody talks to her. This leads to a small argument between them, but eventually, Yanis understands the protagonist Pav, so he invites him to a welcome ceremony at the film club. Once they are at the meeting, Yanis decides to join the film club and they find out that Oka belongs to the same club. While they are there, the proto hears a lot of noise coming from the next room. Despite being warned by the film club members that it's a club of demons, he approaches and the door opens to reveal the girls from the tea club, who are completely out of control. They end up taking the protagonist to their party. At the party, they have several men serving as butlers, but the boy refuses to drink with them. Instead, they make him f another guy who ends up saying that he hates real girls and he will only be interested in 2D girls, for which they end up calling him 2D boy. The next day, Yanis meets the protagonist on the way to the university and tells him that he ended up going to five parties that night with the girls from the tea club. In that, Yanis notices that Coco is looking for him. That's why he says to the proto that he will hide and asks him not to tell her where he is. After classes, the protagonist wants to go home when suddenly he is again by all the university clubs, but Rinda saves him again, loudly declaring that he belongs to her club, the Cultural Research Club. When she realizes he doesn't remember her name, she becomes a bit sad but then changes her mind and invites him to go out. However, he notices that Coco is alone waiting for Yanis, so Rinda sends him to go to talk to her. The protagonist sits next to Coco, and she proceeds to tell him that she feels invisible in the university because she only knows Yanis, but he doesn't even talk to her, and no one else dares to talk to her. 
The boys suggest to her to go together to a club welcome event so she can meet people, and just then, another girl appears and invites them for coffee. At the cafe, this girl talks to them for hours about her club and eventually invites them to their three-day, two-night welcome party. She admits that she's not from their university, but she enjoys talking to people from other universities. After leaving the cafe, they both agree to go together and meet people there in the cafe. The day of the trip to the mentioned party arrives and the proto arrives first, then Coco appears and asks him if Yanis knows about the trip. The boy shows her a message from Yanis and she gets excited, thinking that he's thinking about her. Just then, they see the 2B boy, who is with a group of people going on the same trip, and the proto proceeds to introduce Coco to him. They find out that the 2D boy's real name is Takaya Sato, but from now on, we will just name him Takaya. After that, some white cars arrive, and the club members get out, instructing everyone to fill out forms with their information and get into the cars. When they were traveling, our proto starts to suspect something, because they deviate from the real route and end up in a place that looks like a mansion. Eventually, everyone realizes that they are in the clutches of and they are being held against their will. The group locks their luggage and sucks them to lectures before taking them to dinner. During dinner, some of the guys who went on the trip started to complain, while the proto is worried about Coco, so he comes up with a plan. He pretends to be the believer of the and shares his story about the he had and how he lost most of his memory on it. He demands that anyone who doesn't want to there should be allowed to leave. The sick members believe him and release all the people, including Coco. However, just when the boy thought he had saved the girl, she returns, saying to him that she wants to stay, this because she knew that he was only pretending and didn't want to leave him alone. They return to the dining hall, and the proto takes advantage of the fact that the sick members are drunk to ask for the key to their luggage. They give it to him, but the girl who invited them to the party in the first place decides to accompany them. Because of this, they start running until they reach the room where their luggage is kept and finally escape through a window. Once outside, they run far away until they lose sight of the sick but they still have no signal on their phones to contact someone. While walking, they start talking about Yana's and what Coco really feels for him, showing that she cares deeply for him. She also shows a playful and cheerful side of her that she doesn't show when she's with Yana's. Later, the girl asks him about his life, to which the proto tells her that the anecdote of the incident is real, and he has no memories of anything, but he says to her that he's fine like that because he likes to not worry about things. After talking for a while, they see some lights in the distance. They hesitate to approach, thinking they might be some member from the city, but they end up finding Rinda. The day of the trip, the prona tells us that they were rescued by Rinda, who was at the university seminar house where her club was having a welcome celebration very close to where they were. The next day, the protagonist arrives at the university and is warmly welcomed by his friends. While they are in the faculty cafeteria, Yanis tells the boy that he was so worried that he even wrote to Coco. The proto tells him that she must be very happy, and he reflects on the previous day, even thinking that Yanis hates him. Later, Takaya goes to class, and Yanis tells Oka that since they both don't have classes until the afternoon, they can accompany each other. Coco appears, and a jealous scene unfolds as she and th Oka until Yanis intervenes and defends Oka, leaving with her. He stays behind because he needs to talk to Coco to thank Rinda's club members for rescuing them. After his friends leave, Coco is visibly nervous and after up in the bathroom, she talks to our protagonist, confessing that she always does things to make Yana's hate her more and that she can't stop herself. They decide to thank Rinda, and once they are with her, she invites them to join her club, but they decide to visit it first. They arrive at the club room, express their gratitude, and are invited to participate in the Owa dance. After leaving the club, the proto tells Coco that she doesn't know how to dance and he intends to join that club. However, she doesn't want to join it because she wants to enter Yana's club and change his mind. Days later in class, we see that Yanis is interested in dating Oka and tells our prota that he will finally end things with Coco to have a formal and stable relationship with her, which worries our protagonist. Days pass, and Coco doesn't attend classes until one day she invites our boy to a cafe. At the cafe, they find her, the prota, and Yanis. Coco wants to explain to Yanis why they should be together and shows him childhood photos and memories of their time together. However, he interrupts her, saying he likes Oka and wants a relationship with her. This news shocks Coco who tries to remind him of everything they shared, but Yanis explains that precisely because of that, they can't be in a relationship. He tells her that she's special to him, and he can't fall in love with her. This makes Coco think that he hates her, and she ends up yelling at him, him and crying. Yanis leaves, and she stays behind, apologizing to our protagonist, who waits patiently for her to calm down. Hours pass, and they have to leave, but she says she wants to Then, a gothic-looking girl named Nana appears and tells her that she wants to she should go to her rock concert. At the concert, Coco goes wild, painting herself in her pants and even going on stage Yana's until Nana throws her off stage and she's removed from the venue. The proto takes her to her house and sleeps on the floor while she rests on the bed. While they are there, she starts crying, realizing that she was wrong to impose her desires on Yana's, who also has feelings. 
He tells her he understands because he too is afraid of rejection, which is why he distanced himself from everyone when he lost his memory. He also tells her that when his memories return, the current version of him will disappear. She asks him not to forget her, and he assures her he never will because he likes her and cares about her deeply. She's surprised by his words, but they continue talking normally. Later, Coco goes back to her house and sends a message to our protagonist, saying, You're afraid of being rejected because you also reject them. The next day, our boy takes a train and goes to his parents' house. When he arrives, he goes to his room, where he sees his yearbook, and some photos fall out. As he picks them up, he realizes they are photos of him with Rinda from years ago. Upon seeing those photos, the protagonist runs off to the bridge where he had his there, he begins to wonder why he doesn't remember anything and what relationship he had with Rinda. At that moment, he calls Yanez and starts crying. Meanwhile, we can see the ghostly version of his old self observing him. The ghostly prota tells us that when he had the he was separated from his body like a soul and can only watch the empty shell of the new prota living his life, but he cannot communicate with him. Meanwhile, on a train returning home, our protagonist receives a message from Coco asking to talk. Later, he arrives at the cafe where Coco is waiting for him. She tells him that they just met, and she wants them to be good friends. She gives him one of the two makeup mirrors they were able to bring when they escaped from the s**t. The protagonist accepts the offer of friendship and the gift as well. The next day, while Yanis and our boy are heading to the university, Yanis expresses concern about Coco, feeling that she might have gone overboard with her actions. They run into her at the university's cafeteria, and she overly exaggerates their friendship until Rinda calls her and explains that she's helping Coco plan her class schedule. The Prada stays observing her, and instead of bringing up the photo, he introduces her to Yanis. Coco asks Yanis about his class schedule, and upon finding out that he's in a class with a very difficult professor, she gets scared and runs off to try to change to a different class. Rinda offers them again to join her club, and this time, Coco accepts on behalf of both of them. The scene shifts to the club room, where they introduce themselves and start dancing. Coco thinks the dance is simple, but when they begin, she moves like a robot, showing that she's terrible at dancing. After leaving the club, Coco confronts our prota, upset because he's her best friend and knows how to dance while she doesn't. She bursts into tears, and he realizes that she's carrying a lot on her shoulders, as not much time has passed since her rejection. Later, they go to a cafe, and she apologizes for her earlier behavior. The prota lends her his makeup mirror, and she's happy to see that she uses it. Coco explains that she's trying to sort out her feelings, which is causing a complete mess. He understands, and she keeps talking, saying she hopes to become more like Rinda, as she can see that Rinda is popular, and probably has a boyfriend. Once our boy is back at his home, he thinks about Rinda and wonders why she pretends not to know him. He also recalls how he used to escape from the hospital every night, following a light outside the window. He would find a girl there who told him that she studies at the University of Tokyo and advised him to study there too. He realizes that the girl was Rinda, making him question the nature of their relationship. We go back to the protagonist's past, where we see that he is a sensitive and fearful person, and Rinda takes care of him always. On the last day of classes, they have a farewell with their friends, and at the end, the boy confesses his feelings to Rinda and tells her he accepts going to Tokyo so they can study together. Rinda asks him to let her think about it, and he replies that he'll wait for her the next day at the bridge as always. Meanwhile, the ghostly prona watches his current self sleeping and tells us that he was in love with Rinda, even though she only saw him as a friend, just like what's happening with Coco. The next day, Coco and her boy meet at the university cafeteria, and Oka arrives to invite them to a party. Coco declines the invitation, but the prota accepts. In private, the boy asks Oka why she's inviting Coco when she treats her poorly, suspecting that Oka might have bad intentions. However, Oka says she wants to be Coco's friend and mend things, so he agrees to help her get Coco to come to the party. On the day of the party, Oka knows a lot of people, and Coco is also there because the prota invited her. However, she immediately starts arguing with Yanis, who is also present. Coco challenges Yanis to confess his feelings to Oka, as she thinks he's only pretending to like Oka to distance himself from her. Out of frustration, Yanis calls Oka over and asks her to be his girlfriend in front of everyone at the party. Oka takes it as a joke, and both Yanis and Coco become upset. Our boy and Takaya intervene and take them to the next room, where the tea club was once again. Afterward, Oka starts recording everything for her club, and at the end of the party, you see that Yanis and Coco ended up just as as the prota and Takaya were the first time. On their way home, Coco is and despite the boy wanting her to go home, she insists on going to his place to badmouth Yana's all night. He becomes tired of her behavior and asks to no longer be friends while returning her makeup mirror. Though she refuses to accept it, he tells her it was a mistake to become friends again after she rejected him, calls a taxi for her, and says he won't wait for anyone before walking away. The next day, Rinda notices they are distant, but when she tries to talk to the prota, he and reproaches her for treating him as if she didn't know him from before. After this, he runs off and she follows him until he locks himself in the bathroom. Inside the bathroom, she blames herself for the he had and tells him that she went to the bridge the next day to give him an answer, but arrived too late. 
Later, as it gets dark, Rinda leaves the university and Coco is waiting for her at the door. However, Coco is ignored by Rinda when she exits. Similarly, the boy ignores her too when he leaves, but she starts following him, and he runs away. Unable to catch up with him, Coco takes someone else's bike and continues to pursue him. Meanwhile, our boy runs without knowing where to go until he reaches a bridge, contemplating that if he falls again, he could fix everything and be himself again. At that moment, when he's on the edge of the bridge, Coco appears and hits him with the bike, preventing him from jumping. She tells him not to leave her, that she wants to be with him forever, and that she loves him. After this, the guy with the bicycle arrives with a police officer and accuses Coco of on the bike, leading her to the police station. At the police station, while waiting for Coco's father to arrive, she apologizes to our proto for all the trouble and explains that at the party, she wasn't thinking about Yanis. She was just angry that Oka easily got what she had been struggling to achieve and thought she might lose him too. She confesses that she didn't want to acknowledge her feelings for him, and that it would be fair if he rejected her, but he refuses to do so. Coco's father arrives and after taking her out of the station, he apologizes to the proto and hopes they can still be friends. However, Coco corrects him, stating that they are actually dating. The next day, Coco is waiting for our boy at the bus stop, and they go together to the university. At the university, Takaya notices they are holding hands and Coco tells him they are now dating, and she loves him, which prompts Takaya to teach Proto until Yanis arrives with his dyed hair. In the university cafeteria, Yanis explains that after the rejection, he was going to shave his head, but the hairdresser wanted to practice and ended up with that hair color. He's happy that the boy is now with Coco, as he feels liberated. However, Coco starts teasing him about Oka's rejection. The proto interrupts her, saying it's time to go to class, and they agree to meet during a free time. Later, Oka appears, but Yanis, embarrassed, runs away, leaving everyone behind. Oka explains that she didn't take his confession seriously because they were at a party. Then Rinda appears, because she wants to talk to the proto, but he gets up and runs out of the cafeteria. As the days pass, our boy and Coco's relationship becomes closer, while the boy avoids Rinda's calls and messages. One day, when the proto cleans his room, we see that he keeps many porn magazines in a, in a box. Just then, Coco visits, and after they talk, she asks him what happened with Rinda, but he only says that they had a f and Rinda tries to help him, but he unloads his emotions on her, and now they're not talking. Coco accepts that explanation and opens the box, thinking there are chips inside, but she realizes its content, and they both get scared and on the bed. He apologizes, and she tells him their relationship is just starting, but she wants their first time to be in Paris. Afterward, she suggests they go buy cake, and as they leave, they bump into Nana in the elevator, but they don't recognize her without makeup. Days pass, and one day, the proto receives an unknown call informing him about a water leak in his neighbor's room, and that he should check if his room is flooded. He leaves Coco at the university and goes to check, finding Nana, the girl who saw them in the elevator. She tells him she's Rinda's neighbor and friend, and as he opens his door, she pulls Rinda out of his room and leaves them alone. Our boy asks to talk in his room, and while they discuss, he starts crying and Nana tells him about the love confession he made after they finished school. At that moment, Coco calls him and says that Yanis has a problem. We go back to the past, and we see that while waiting for Rinda, the protagonist overhears her telling her friends that she doesn't consider him a man and that she doesn't like him at all. This angers the boy, and when Rinda realizes that he hurt her, she gets scared and tries to apologize to him over the following days, but he avoids her. However, on a rainy day, she waits for him and apologizes for being the prona forgives her, saying that he also doesn't like her, but at that moment, the ghost of our boy tells us that his feelings for her and he hopes she felt the same. In the present, the proto is on a call with his girlfriend while Rinda is in her room. Coco tells him that Yana's had a problem with Oka again, and she hasn't seen him since. She asks the boy to go find him since she can't do it herself as being locked up with someone of the opposite would be considered cheating, just like where Proto is doing. At that moment, Rinda leaves and the boy goes to see his friend. When he arrives, he sees Yana's being by a girl from the theater club. To drive her away, the protagonist pretends to be his boyfriend, scaring the girl off. Then they enter Yana's room, and he tells him that he asked Oka not to talk to him anymore, and how he lost his trust after seeing everyone talking about him. The protagonist calls Takaya, and suggests having a party to cheer up his friend. Later, the two guys arrive at the amusement park and find Takaya with Coco, who overheard the call and decided to join the party. Takaya receives a call from Oka, and Coco invites her to the party, leaving Yana surprised. When Oka arrives, Coco treats her poorly, trying to defend Yanez, but Oka tells her not to interfere and that he already asked her not to talk to him anymore. When Oka was about to cry, Coco puts some noodles on her face, saying that only she can look cute crying in front of the proto. This calms Oka down, and she asks him to record her as she was being funny, which makes Coco and Oka laugh. They spend the day at the amusement park, and little by little, Yanez and Oka reconcile. At night, they go to the proto's house, where they all have dinner and sleep. In the middle of the night, our boy wakes up and talks to Rinda. To his surprise, Rinda was staying in Nana's room, so they went to the balcony to talk. 
During the conversation, the protagonist asks her what her response was when he confessed to her before the She replies that her answer was no, that she didn't consider him as her partner. He feels relieved and asks if she wants to go back to that time, but he doesn't let her answer and shouts that he does want to go back, but immediately takes it back and realizes what he said. Rinda takes the opportunity to tell him that it's just a dream, and they both go back to their rooms to sleep. Then we see the ghost of the proto watching him and saying that he still loves Rinda but can't separate from his body, as doing so would make him disappear. The next day, Oka and Coco leave early from the protagonist's room. At the university, Oka tells the boy that Coco is feeling sick with the flu and won't be attending classes. With that excuse, several days pass without them seeing each other, and they only communicate through text messages. Until one day, Coco comes to the university for club practice for the festival, and tells him that she's feeling better. During the practice, she distances herself from everyone and even becomes sad when she sees Rinda helping the proto and being friends again. After classes, the boy compliments Coco on her beauty in traditional Japanese clothing, but he notices that she looks sad. Suddenly, it starts to rain and they run for cover. At that moment, she begins to express her insecurities, saying that she tries to look pretty for him, but she always has negative thoughts that bring her down. She asks if he still loves her, and our protagonist consoles her, ending up kissing her. Meanwhile, the ghost of the proto mentions that something similar happened with Rinda, but that will remain between Rinda and him. We go back in time while the ghost of the protagonist tells us that Rinda has an older brother they both call brother. One day, this brother tells them that he will introduce them to his bride, showing how deeply in love he is. However, in private, Rinda confesses to our boy that she found out the bride is cheating on her brother. They decide to take pictures as evidence to expose the girl. They take photos of the bride and her boyfriend and hugging and entering a room together. But when they were about to take more pictures, Rinda changes her mind, asks to delete everything and decides to act like an adult. After some time, the bride comes out of the room and the two call her. Rinda asks to talk, but she tries to escape. They end up inside the bride's car and have a conversation. Meanwhile, the proto notices that the brother was watching everything from a window in the room, and he sits on the car hood staring at him. In the end, Rinda forgives the bride, tells her not to do it again, and promises to forget this incident. After that, they leave, and once they arrive at a store, Rinda starts crying because the boy reproaches her for not doing anything. However, he calms her down, saying that she can always count on him, and wherever he is, he will find her and hear her voice. Rinda holds his hand and asks if she can trust him, but the proto doesn't answer. Back in the present, it's a new day, and the protagonist is at the cafe feeling sad because Coco got sick again with the flu. Rinda arrives, and our boy explains Coco's condition to her. Before leaving, Rinda tells him that he should listen to Coco's voice wherever she is, regardless of the place because she is his girlfriend. The ghost of the proto realizes that, and later at night, while his body sleeps, he wonders if he had responded to Rinda back then, he might not have become a ghost. Suddenly, in the middle of the night, the protagonist wakes up, and he can't control his body properly and ends up falling off the bed. At that moment, he realizes that he has a body again. He's no longer a ghost. He immediately calls Rinda's name. After that, he gets up to go see Rinda, but he ends up falling. When he gets up, he's back to his usual self and doesn't remember why he wanted to see Rinda or even why he's out of bed. When he realizes he has a on his chin from the fall, so he goes back to bed, wondering what happened. The next morning, the protagonist wakes up with a high fever and tries to go to the hospital, but he can't walk and ends up tripping at Nana's door. She comes out to see and reluctantly takes him to the hospital and brings him back home, where she hands him over to Rinda, who arrived because Nana informed her. In his room, Rinda starts taking care of him and tells him that she already called Coco. The protagonist tells her that he wants to see his girlfriend, but deep down, he feels like he wants to stay with Rinda because he feels that she is real and Coco is just a dream. And if he doesn't see her, she will disappear along with his fever. Just then, when Rinda is helping him sit up, Coco arrives with a bouquet of flowers and slams the door open, angrily asking if our boy is cheating on her. After that, she says that a guy with a girlfriend cannot be with another girl because it's infidelity. However, seeing Rinda getting scared, she changes completely, saying it was a joke, and throws away the bouquet. Yanas catches the bouquet and enters the room, playing with Takaya about who he will marry. Yanas asks Coco if she's jealous and angry, thinking he was being unfaithful, while Takaya introduces himself to Rinda. Coco apologizes to the protagonist, saying that she didn't really think he was being unfaithful, but she was bothered by another girl taking care of him. Rinda reassures her not to worry. In the end, Yanas asks Rinda where her parents live, but since she doesn't answer that question, they subtly changed the subject to go into the beach together, including Oka, as they had made a pact to be together every time they went on a trip. Meanwhile, the protagonist falls asleep. When he wakes up, he finds only Coco, who apologizes for bringing everyone and not being able to take care of him properly. She also says that she feels she's not a good girlfriend and that it would be better if he were with someone like Rinda. The protagonist corrects her and tells her that he only wants to be with her. Coco then tells him that she wants to go to the beach in the summer, but just the two of them, not with the others, so they can be together. She said this because he had previously mentioned that he wanted his first time to be in Paris, 
but now she would like it to be on the beach. The protagonist agrees, and they both end up hugging each other. Now we see that our prota already recovered, goes out with Coco, and they take the train. On the way, his girlfriend tells him that they call her Robochica in the club because of her way of dancing and also mentions that summer vacation is coming up and they can go to the beach. The protagonist starts thinking that he hasn't been able to tell Coco about his feelings for Rinda, nor whether she found out that they knew each other from before. When they arrive at their destination, we see that they have gathered with their club, and they show them brochures about the festival they will participate in during the summer. During the meeting, our boy starts feeling jealous of the club leader because he is quite close to Rinda. He keeps telling himself that he shouldn't feel jealous, as he is with Coco. After the meeting, he asks his clubmates how to get to the beach as he wants to take Coco there, as he promised. However, they tell him that without a car, it will be difficult, and even more so if he doesn't have money, as he needs to impress someone from a wealthy family like Coco, and for that, he needs money. Later, the protagonist is with Coco in a cafe, and she forbids him from working, as that would leave him with less time to spend with her. Despite him explaining that he needs money to go to the beach, she insists that she will cover the expenses. Oka appears and tells them that she has to work, and when she finds out that the prota also wants a job, she informs him that they are looking for employees at her workplace. At the cafe where Oka works, the two of them wait while observing everything, but Coco firmly says that she definitely can't work there. Night falls, and our boy goes to his room, but before that, he knocks on Nana's door to return the money she spent on the taxi to take him to the hospital, and he brings her some cookies as a token of appreciation. Nana suggests that he should thank Rinda too, but the prota tells her that he doesn't have money and is looking for a job, to which Nana offers him a job as a waiter for one night, on the condition that he brings Yanas along. The next day, he tells Yanas about the job where they will be paid well, and just when Yanas was starting to hesitate, the girls from the tea club show up and offer them jobs that sound impossible. This prompts both of them to accept Nana's job offer, but without telling Coco. The day of the event arrives, and they meet at the protagonist's house to go together. We find out that the Prabhupada is lying to Coco, telling her that he is working on a report and won't be able to use his phone for a few hours. On their way to the event, Yanas praises our Prabhupada's patience for putting up with Coco, but the protagonist thinks that he actually only endures Coco because he has feelings for Rinda, and he doesn't want Coco to feel too bad. Upon arriving at the venue, they are dressed in a costumes, the protagonist as a maid and Yanas and Later, we find out that it's a birthday party. While the guys are working, Nana appears dressed as a devil twin, and she shows to our boy that her other twin is Rinda, who has also come to work. When the two of them see each other, they are initially embarrassed, but then start laughing at how they are dressed. Meanwhile, Coco is calling the prota insistently and we see that she has the picture of the protagonist with Rinda from when they were kids. During the party, we see everyone having fun, even Yanis, who flexes his muscles for money. On the other hand, Coco gets worried when she doesn't hear anything from our protagonist, so she goes to his house to look for him, but he's not there. She then goes to knock on Nana's door, but there's no answer there either. Back at the party, the prota starts seeing Rinda in a sexy way, and suddenly she starts taking photos with other girls, and he finds himself liking the way she poses in the pictures. The crowd gathers them together to take photos of them close together, and they are given a light stick that Rinda puts in her mouth. Our boy takes advantage of this and puts his arm around her posing with her on his lip, getting closer and biting the other end of the light stick. At that moment, we see Coco getting desperate as she searches for him and eventually arrives at the party, where she sees that the protagonist is with Rinda. He sees her and immediately releases Rinda, both of them startled to see her. Coco approaches him, throws a drink at him, and s**ps him. Rinda starts apologizing but is taken away by Nana while the boy takes Coco to the dressing room. He tells her that he was working and asks her to wait for him in his apartment, giving her his key. After finishing work, he rushes there and realizes he has many messages from Coco, each one showing more concern than the previous one. Finally, when he arrives at his room, he finds Coco in the dark, and she apologizes for throwing the drink and s**ing him when his wound was still open. He sits on the floor and apologizes to her, explaining that he wanted to be a good boyfriend, which is why he accepted a job without telling her and he didn't know Rinda would be there. They got carried away, and nothing happened. Then she shows him the picture of him and Rinda as kids and asks him to tell her the truth. The prota starts telling her everything and says he didn't tell her because he used to love Rinda, and he didn't want to hurt her, as sometimes those feelings come back, not his memories, but the feelings, and he feels bad about it because now Coco is his girlfriend. Coco questions him about why he didn't tell her where she's only trying to be a good girlfriend and not think negatively or feel insecure about him. But he says he wants to be completely honest with her. Coco gets up and hugs him, telling him never to remember the past to stay like this with her, because she loves him, she doesn't know how, but she loves him. She also hints that she wants to spend the night with him, but he stops her, and she confesses that she's feeling anxious because she has no photos or memories with him yet. Until that moment, they haven't made any memories together. He accepts this and tells her he understands but won't pressure her into anything just because of his cowardice. He suggests starting to take photos and make memories together. 
The next day, our boy goes to look for Rinda, and when she arrives, she starts apologizing, but he tells her that Coco is fine, and the matter is resolved. Then, we see them by the riverside, and the proto asks Rinda if they were never a couple, and if she never felt any attraction towards him. She tells him they were never more than friends, and she only saw him as such. Then, he takes out the photo and contemplates tearing it, but he has an internal conflict because his mind says he loves Rinda, and he ends up dropping the photo. Rinda picks up the photo and Outboy thanks her for everything, but says that from that moment on, they should pretend to be strangers because it's very stressful for him to think about his amnesia. Also, Coco is still afraid of her, so he wants to start treating his girlfriend well. Rinda understands and stands up, breaking the photo into many pieces, telling him that it's for the best even if he thinks otherwise. We then see the protagonist in his room taking photos with Coco and having fun with her, telling her they need to take pictures outside on the street, so they go out together to take some photos. We find ourselves in the dream that our protagonist is having, which is about what happened after the when he escaped from the hospital and met Rinda. That's when he decides to study at Tokyo University and promises Rinda to deliver a message to his friend who is also in the hospital. She starts crying and tells him it's too late, but just as she was about to tell him the message, the protagonist wakes up with that thought in his head. Summer vacation begins and we see all of our boys' club members gather for the festival. Rinda shows up and both she and the proto act as if they only know each other from the university. But then, Coco arrives, completely nervous, and even though they try to calm her down, it doesn't work. So the whole group gives up and is about to leave. However, Rinda tells them that it's time to show that to the boys, and they all start doing a silly dance around Coco and the protagonist. Our boy runs to hug his girlfriend out of fear when they start dancing. In the end, he joins the dance, and after a while, Coco also joins them, managing to overcome her nervousness and finally going to the festival. As the evening falls, the festival ends, and they are told they can go see the fireworks. So the couple decides to go. Before they leave, Rinda says goodbye to both of them, telling them she will see them at the camp. While they are waiting, we see the ghostly Proda, angry about what happened with Rinda, saying he still loves her in his heart and because of that, you will become an evil being and make her unhappy. At that moment, it starts raining and everyone has to run. Days go by and they find out that the camp was cancelled and many other things start going wrong for the Proda. Even on the day when Coco comes to his apartment, he stands outside the elevator to surprise her, but Nana greets him instead and him in the nose, causing it to In the end, it turns out Coco had used the stairs to go up. Coco came to spend the day with him and prepare lunch for him. But when he tries to help her, Coco gets nervous and doesn't let him, covering his eyes with a blindfold and turning him against a mirror with his hands behind his back. She starts telling him a story about not spying while pretending to cook, and when she brings out the food already prepared, she realizes that the blindfold has fallen off and he has seen everything. The girl gets nervous and starts telling him that it's just a joke, that the food on the table is fake, forcing him to laugh. The night arrives and while they are walking, she confesses that she tried to practice at home, but she got nervous and her maid ended up doing it. Her maid had even lent her the apron. They arrive at a park and she asks him to talk a little more there. While sitting on a bench, she tells him that she will take cooking classes and even skip her family vacation in Barcelona to prove that she can be a real woman. The protagonist tells her it's not necessary that she can stay as she is and should go on her vacation because although he would like to be with her and spend his vacation with her, it would be boring for her. Coco understands and wants to give him a kiss, but the boy turns his face away and tells her they should leave. She pretends like nothing happened and leaves with him. When he was alone in his room, our boy starts thinking that if Coco meets someone else, he won't even be able to complain, and this starts to him. Then the ghostly protagonist says it's just the beginning, and it will be much worse. The protagonist is surprised, wondering what was the voice he heard. The next day, our protagonist receives a call from Takaya, who tells him that Yanis has been turning down every invitation to hang out, so he thinks Yanis is dating someone. As a result, Takaya invites the boy to go out with him. All of this is overheard by Coco from behind the door of the Proto's room. When he notices Coco, he hands her the phone, and she and Takaya speculate that Oka might be the possible girl Yanis is dating, so they plan to spy on them. The three of them go to Oka's house because Coco supposes that if Yanis is busy, it's because he will see Oka that day, and being a gentleman, he will pick her up. However, they are caught by Oka, who invites them in, telling them that she has nothing to do all day and hasn't seen Yanis all summer. Inside Oka's house, the boys see that it is completely empty and Coco asks her about it. Oka tells them that her family had to return to their hometown and she is now all alone, but soon she will have to move as well. She needs to save money, so she won't be able to go on the trip with her camera as she had hoped. At that moment, Takaya remembers the planned beach trip and suggests inviting Yanis there. Everyone agrees and they go out to eat at a place Oka likes. On their way, they see Yanis entering the restaurant with Rinda, surprising everyone. They start to believe that the two of them are dating. Oka, feeling sad, suggests not interrupting them, so they decide to observe from afar. In the following days, we see Coco visiting Oka's house in disguise so that no one recognizes her. Once there, she says she came to try on for the beach trip. While trying on 
Oka asks if she found out anything about Rinda and Yanez, but Coco says she hasn't even seen them again. Then Coco begins to express how she feels about her prota and what happened that day when she avoided kissing him. It made her feel insecure, and she wants her boy to understand her feelings. Oka listens and advises her to try to understand the protagonist and see that he only wants to respect her. Coco randomly picks and they end up choosing their school. They start recording themselves, presenting and having fun. On the other hand, at our boy's house, Yanis is lending him a Yanis tells the proto that he wanted to invite Rinda, but she says she would go on a trip to visit her parents. He also asks our boy if he knows where her parents live, but he only says no. It's a sunny day, and we see Coco with the protagonist on a train, heading to the beach. They start talking about their and the boy tells her he's wearing a boomerang He then shows her the clothes he'll wear later and Coco recognizes one of them as Yanis's. Mentioning Yanis, Coco asks the proto if he has said anything about Rinda. The boy clarifies that since they agreed to see them, they haven't discussed the topic. Coco finally admits that she's worried about Oka and understands how she feels because any guy who sees Rinda would fall for her. The protagonist listens and assures Coco that he loves only her, and she should be sure of that, giving her reassurance. When the two arrive at the meeting point, they realize that Takaya hasn't shown up, so they start looking for him. Takaya honks the car horn, and they find him waiting for them in the car. He is upset because when our prota and Coco get into the car, they sit in the back as if it were a taxi. The group only starts driving once they pick up Oka. The protagonist calls Oka to tell her they'll be late, and she says she'll wait for them at a nearby cafe. When they get to the pickup spot, Oka doesn't answer the calls because her phone has no signal. Coco goes out of the car to find her quickly, but she returns after a long while, making Takaya think they are cursed. Despite the delay, Coco sits in the back with the couple. They agree not to bring up the Rinda issue. After a while, the boys make Yanis talk to Oka, and he says he heard that she's going through a complicated situation. Oka treats him indifferently and coldly, saying it's something unimportant, and they should be telling her about it. This angers Yanis and makes the whole group uncomfortable. On their way to the beach, they get stuck in traffic and to make matters worse, it starts raining, even though the forecast predicted a sunny day. Takaya starts joking that one of them must be cursed. When they reach the beach parking lot, the rain is too heavy, so they can't leave the car. Suddenly, Coco needs to use the restroom, but nobody has an umbrella. Our boy decides to his clothes and stay in his although he hesitates when he realizes he only has the boomerang. He eventually leaves the car to accompany Coco to the beach restroom. Coco sees him getting in the parking lot, so she also takes clothes and joins the prota in having fun. Oka takes out her camera and starts recording them, but Coco takes it away and pulls her out of the car to have fun together. Seeing this, Takaya and Yanis join their friends and everyone starts playing around. Coco seizes the moment to go to the restroom, but she slips and falls and our boy jokingly asks if something fell out. Coco calls him a f the first time she's called him that. Afterward, they go to eat something and the rain eventually stops and the sun comes out, so they head to the beach and have fun. When night falls, they buy fireworks and set them off on the beach. After a fun-filled day, it's time for everyone to go home. However, Takaya is very tired and feels like he's about to fall asleep, so Coco suggests driving since she has a driver's license. Everyone agrees and the protagonist sits next to her to keep her company. At first, everything was fine. Oka, Yanis, and Takaya sleep in the back while the proto talks to Coco about her vacation in Barcelona and that he'll wait for her with a gift. However, after a while, our boy starts to doze off but tries to stay awake for her. Unfortunately, Coco also falls asleep while driving. At this moment, the proto's ghost yells for help as he didn't want this to happen and didn't want them to get hurt. He is seen running and passing through several doors, recalling everything that has happened since that moment from when he escaped from the hospital and met Rinda. She only said, hang in there, when he asked for a message for his friend. Suddenly, the protagonist wakes up, stepping on the brakes just as they were about to crash into a guardrail and fall into a ravine. He manages to avoid the accident. When the car suddenly breaks, everyone in the car wakes up startled by the incident, but Coco is the most affected. Takaya suggests getting out of the car, and our boy becomes aware of his girlfriend's sh** as he sees her state. As they exit the car, Yanis notices Oka covering her face, and upon seeing her, they realize she has a wound on her mouth, which further alarms Coco. Coco tries to help clean the wound. The protagonist decides to call the police and report the Later, the police arrive and attend to Oka, informing Coco that they will only need to pay for the damages to the guardrail they hit. However, as they are they need to inform their parents. Afterward, while Takaya drives back home, Coco's father is waiting for her at the drop-off point. Coco is surprised to see him, gets out of the car, and approaches him. But instead of receiving a hug or comfort, her father gives her a strong that sends her flying and Coco starts crying, leaving everyone in shock. In the following days, our boy talks to Yanis on the phone, who informs him that Oka is doing better, but they haven't been able to reach Coco. The proto has an idea, and as he leaves his room, he runs into Nana, who attacks him with a loaf of bread and tells him she hates it when he's down because it affects her mood. 
He apologizes and Nana offers him a free pass to her concert. Later, they are all gathered at the cafe where Oka works, except for Coco. They begin to discuss the situation, and it is revealed that Coco's father apologized to the parents of the kids and canceled their vacation in Barcelona. The protagonist suggests they all go together to visit Coco at her house as Yanas knows where she lives. However, since Oka has to work, our boy proposes to go alone as Coco will feel more comforted seeing him as her boyfriend. Later, the proto arrives at Coco's house and meets her father, who takes him inside and tells him that Coco hasn't been in good spirits. Coco's father opens Coco's room door and lets him in. Coco is surprised to see the proto, but she turns away and tells him not to come closer. She confesses that she realized she was pretending to be an adult when in reality, she never was and she feels so ashamed that she doesn't even want to see anyone. The protagonist gets angry with her and tells her not to run away from her problems, but to face them. This causes Coco to explode and shout at our boy, saying that he has also been running away from his past and he has no right to tell her otherwise. He reminds her that it was she who asked him never to remember her past, to which she yells that it was the only thing she could do after he confessed that he used to love Rinda. Coco the protagonist who falls to the floor, and she tells him that she'll leave him, just like she left her family, her home, and even Rinda, whom she loves so much. She reveals that she had a recurring dream in which they were in a car, and he left her alone after she got out of the car. The proto hugs her and promises never to leave her, and whenever she has that dream again, she should fight not to get out of the car, and he will fight to accept his past. At that moment, our boy notices Coco's father standing behind them. Coco is unaware and continues talking, telling him that she loves him so much and wants to be with him forever. The protagonist tries to warn her that her father is behind them, but she realizes it when she hears the jingle of her cat's bell and sees her father there. Our boy tries to lie, but Coco's father tells him that lying is bad and that he was waiting for them to finish to invite them all to eat ramen together. Coco becomes upset and throws a tantrum, but her father asks the proto to prepare the ramen, explaining that they should continue with their daily routine. The boy agrees and after making the ramen, returns to Coco's room and finds that her father has already put her to bed. Coco's father thanks the protagonist and goes to eat. Our boy realizes that Coco is having nightmares again, so he approaches and tells her to fight, to which the sleeping Coco responds that she will. It's the day of the summer festival and we see the proto arriving at the place where his club has a reservation. He enters the venue and meets most of the club members. At first, they see him with a sad expression, but then their mood changes completely, and they try to be very attentive to him. The club leader appears and tells the protagonist that everyone thinks he and Coco have broken up because they tried to call her but couldn't reach her, and when they asked him about Coco, he seemed distant. Our boy tries to explain to them that they haven't broken up but they don't listen. Just then, Coco arrives dressed in a yukata. At the request of the club leader, the others start praising and approaching her, just like they did with the proto. This was all an effort to prevent them from leaving the club. Seeing this, the protagonist shouts that they haven't broken up and everyone gets angry with the club leader for misleading them. Later, the leader receives a message from the former club leader Hoshino, saying that he would come to see them. This brings joy to all the club members, as Hoshino had previously told them that he would only come to the festival if he found a job. However, when Hoshino arrives and sees everyone congratulating him, he admits that he still hasn't found a job and came just to try to cheer himself up, leaving everyone feeling awkward. That Rinda arrives and sees everyone in silence. Once everyone calms down, the club leader starts complaining while drinking with his friends and Rinda talks to Coco and our boy. She expresses her relief that the accident didn't turn out worse and mentions that she heard about it from somewhere. The proto surprises Rinda by asking her if they had played with fireworks before. Coco realizes that the boy is keeping his promise not to run away from his past and continues the conversation with Rinda, indicating that she approves of the discussion and knows about what happened. Rinda feels more at ease and tells them that the protagonist has a scar on his left leg from a day when they played with fireworks and one hit our unfortunate boy. Although the proto remembers that it was because he was protecting her, Rinda tells him that everyone else ran away, leaving only him because he was clumsy. Then she asks if he will visit his parents during the summer, and the boy says he will because they are eager to see him. Coco asks Rinda if she could keep the proto company if she happens to see him at his parents' house. However, Rinda informs them that they have a reunion with their former classmates next week. She apologizes for not telling him earlier and understands if he doesn't want to go. Seeing that the protagonist is unsure how to respond, Coco answers for him, saying that he will go. Later, the couple is strolling and Coco apologizes for getting involved and causing a problem. Our boy tells her it's not a problem, but he admits that it might be difficult because he is no longer the same boy and his friends might want the old him back. However, he reassures her that he will keep his promise not to run away from his past and will attend the reunion. Coco tells him that she feels like she is with the real proto now, the one she didn't fully accept before and she used to feel jealous of his friends, but now she feels good knowing the true him. Days pass and we see Oka has moved and is unpacking with Coco's help, who claims she went to her new apartment out of curiosity and to her, but she ends up wearing an apron to help. 
Ogre asks if Coco will stay overnight, but Coco refuses, saying she would never do that, not even if the world ends. However, that night, we see both of them lying in bed, about to sleep. Before sleeping, Oka tells Coco that she knows she's thinking about our boy and how he's doing. She admires Coco because she sees her as someone who gives her heart completely when she falls in love, without any limits. Coco responds that she's always like that, but Oka corrects her and says it's not everyone. Days later, Yanis is at an ice cream shop with Takaya and Coco, who invited them to apologize for the while Coco is in the restroom, Yanas asks Takaya if he knows the name of the high school our boy attended, this because he's suspicious of the protagonist's friendship with Rinda. However, Takaya says he doesn't know because the proto never talks about his past. He tells Yanas about our boy's and how, at first he thought it was a lie, but on the beach day he saw the scar on the proto's head, and it might be true, but it's best not to meddle in things people don't want to talk about. Coco returns and Yanis, ignoring Takaya's advice, asks her if she knew that the protagonist had been in the hospital. Coco quickly pretends not to know and changes the subject, telling them about the night she helped Oka. We see Coco entering the proto's room while he is still away. She feels bad for intruding, but she claims she came to check his mail and couldn't resist the urge. She throws herself onto our boy's bed and starts kissing the pillow, calling him a fool, saying she loves him and wants him to kiss her. Then she falls backward and does a pose like the girl from the Exorcist movie, rising backward with hands on the bed. However, at that moment, she notices Nana standing on her, leaving her in shock. Later, we see both of them in Nana's room, and Nana tells Coco that she knows the proto is not there. So when she heard the noise, she went to check, but she liked the Exorcist pose and wanted Coco to do it at her horror-themed concert. Obviously, Coco refuses and almost leaves Nana breathless when she begs her not to tell anyone and promises to help her with anything else. Nana agrees and tells her to stay in her room. When Nana leaves, a man who looks like a Yakuza arrives with a knife in his stomach. Coco sees him through the peephole of the door when he starts kicking the door, yelling in it. When it seems like he's going to enter, she hides in Nana's closet. The guy enters and starts looking for her when suddenly Coco does the exorcist pose and scares him, and she hits him with her purse mount, revealing that the was fake. Then Nana enters and explains that he is the bestest of her band and during their concert, he will appear as a Yakuza, so he wanted to see if he really scared people. He also tells her that he saw her moving like the exorcist and convinces her to do that on stage. Meanwhile in Shizuoka, while Rinda is picking up the protagonist from his parents' house, Rinda's brother shows up. Although the boy doesn't remember him, he is very excited and happy to hear that the proto is fine. In the car, we see that our boy has the mirror that Coco gave him. It's very nervous, but Rinda tells him she will help him and that he should treat her informally since they were classmates there. Upon arriving at the high school, the protagonist is so nervous that he can't move out of fear and ends up sitting on the floor, but Rinda says she will help him and asks him to close his eyes. She takes his hand and starts leading him to the high school while he apologizes to Rinda for the time he told her to stay away and pretend they never met. He realizes that Rinda is not listening to him, and when he opens his eyes, he sees that Koichiro, a classmate, is holding his hand, but the proto doesn't recognize him. Then all his ex-classmates see him and come closer, giving him a red t-shirt and saying they are going to play dodgeball. They start playing and we notice that Rinda is very good at the game. She tells him a story about how our boy cheated to win this game when they were kids by pretending a ball hit him in the face and gaining an advantage. Now it's her revenge. They start playing and just when it seems like the protagonist is about to win, Rinda performs a maneuver in the air allowing the ball to hit her face, giving her team the advantage, and they win against the protus team. After that, in their old classroom, we see our boy's ex-classmates talking to him about his past, saying that it was inevitable since he always did everything to get the girl's attention. Then their old teacher arrives and upon seeing the protagonist, he tells him that he used to cry if he wasn't with his classmates and everyone confirms that he was a crybaby, although the boy doesn't believe them. The girls start taking pictures with the teacher, and this encourages everyone to take pictures, including our prota, who gets excited to take pictures with the girls and ends up taking pictures even with Rinda. As night falls, we see the boy with Rinda, telling her that he realized that the dodgeball was an idea so they could play with him. She listens and tells him that when they found out, everyone wanted to do something for him. She also asks if he agreed to go to the reunion because of the incident with Coco. The protagonist says yes, that there are always good and bad things and he shouldn't stop being who he is because of that. These words encourage Rinda, who tells him that she is finally listening to the real Prota and not the person burdened by his past. Our boy tells her that he has accepted who he is and also tells her about the message she sent him when he was in the hospital, which he remembered and saved him from the act. Later, the protagonist tells Rinda that he will go to the bridge where the act happened to take a picture for Coco. When he arrives, the atmosphere darkens and suddenly, he sees himself. But it's the day of the act, and the motorcycle that Nathan off the bridge passes by. Then our proto runs and holds onto the other proto that is the bridge. But the other protagonist stops him, causing our real proto to fall backward and break the mirror that Coco gave him. Our boy holds the mirror, and upon seeing it broken, thinks he's recovering his memories. 
As a result of this, the protagonist goes to the hospital and tells everything to his doctor, who listens and prescribes tranquilizers for when he feels restless because he doesn't clearly understand what is happening to him. Back on the train, our boy starts reflecting on when his ghost might have taken over his body, thinking that both his old and new consciousness want to be the prototata. He also considers that his old consciousness might have withdrawn willingly. Sometime later in mid-September, the protagonist returns to Tokyo, with the ring his mother gave him for Coco. When he's arriving at his room, he sees Coco, and she runs to hug him. But at that moment, her friends appear and hug him first. Coco sees them and scolds them for not letting her greet him first. After that, she goes to hug him, and he pretends not to remember her, but then greets her. They go to eat at a restaurant, and there, the boy notices that Oka has cut her hair. Also, Yanas asks for permission to film in their club for the university festival, and tells them about Rinda. They tell them they will talk to their senpais for permission, worried about Oka, but she ignores the whole situation. After that, we see our Prota and Yanis shopping at a supermarket and Yanis tells him he feels that the Prota is hiding something from him. Our boy considers telling him everything but is interrupted by Yanis, who tells him to forget about it. Night comes and back at the Prota's place, he is with Coco, explaining how his mirror broke. He tells her he will give her something in return when he remembers the ring his mother gave him. However, he starts rambling about marrying her and receiving her inheritance, so Coco interrupts him and gives him a gift. When he opens the gift, our boy realizes it's a somewhat strange sculpture and thinks it's a club, but it's actually the Eiffel Tower. Next, Coco tells him that she missed him a lot and up of him, saying she wants to be with him and for dress, asking if he wants to. The protagonist places her under him, but the movement makes her feel like which she and tells him it's not important. They start kissing again until the movement causes Coco to knock over her sculpture, hitting herself in the head. Later, we see the Prota taking care of her in her bed and saying that they couldn't expect more from them since they are clumsy. She tells him she feels like his room is her own, just like her own house, and he tells her that he also wants to always return to her. Classes continue, and we see that in our Prota's club, Yanis is introduced, and they tell him that he will film everything in the club. All the guys get excited, and a couple of girls start flirting with him. Later, we see Yanis feeling sad because he still can't talk to Rinda as she is angry with him, and by the end of the day, he still couldn't talk to her. At that moment, while our boy and Coco try to cheer him up in the classroom, Rinda signals the protagonist to talk to her privately. He follows her outside, leaving Coco with Yanis. Rinda suggests going to have tea, and the girls who were flirting with Yanis earlier join them. Once outside, Rinda starts scolding the prota and him. But since he doesn't understand, she ends up f***ing him on the ground, where he gets dirty with They return to the university so our boy can change, and they see that it's empty because it's nighttime. When Rinda calms down, she tells him about her friend and how, when she sensed that he was interested in her, she wanted to distance herself not to hurt him. But at that moment, Coco and our Prota appeared with Yanis in the club. She feels she should have informed him beforehand. The protagonist tells her that it's clear she is also interested in Yanis, and this makes her start playing with his hands. Then he shows her the ring, and she also makes a joke. In the end, they talk about how the Prota is doing things right now, and he tells her she should talk to Yanis and tell him everything so that he doesn't misunderstand her. Just then, they are interrupted by Oka, who asks to talk to our boy. As Rinda leaves, Oka starts scolding the boy, asking why he is so friendly with Rinda if he's with Coco, implying that she thinks he is cheating on her. And she leaves, not letting him explain and telling him he's the worst. After that, we see the protagonist and Coco discussing what happened and how Oka reacted. Coco tells him it must be because of Oka's feelings, so they both decide to help their friends so they can be happy. The protagonist realizes it's the right place and tries to give the ring to Coco, but he can't find it, so he thinks he forgot it. Just then, they are interrupted by a message from Yanis to the Prota, asking for help because the girls who were flirting with him are c***ing him. Night comes, and back at his house, our boy wonders when to give the ring to Coco since, since Oka won't talk to him, he has no one to ask for advice. The next day, we see the Prota meeting Nana as they take the same train. On the train, he hesitates to ask about the ring, but Nana tells him that Coco did the exorcist and before telling him more, she falls asleep. We move to the university cafe where Takaya, the Prota, and Coco are, and then Yanis and Oka arrive. Oka tells Coco that they are selling the ice cream they both like, so they go together, leaving the guys alone. Meanwhile, they start talking about Rinda and how she doesn't talk to Yanis. Yanis tells them that he notices that the leader of their club is interested in Rinda, and whenever he wants to get close to her, the leader calls her or drives her away. They wanted to keep talking, but they realized they were late for class and ended up running to their classroom. After classes, it's getting late and our protagonist notices that Coco was waiting for him at the exit. She tells him that she's happy waiting for him, so she invites him to a cafe. Once there, he asks her about the exorcist and Nana told him she did that at her concert. Coco gets nervous and changes the topic, suggesting inviting everyone to Nana's concert. Meanwhile, the protagonist thinks he should give her the ring soon. The next morning, we see our boy waiting for Coco, looking at his ring and thinking about how to give it to her. 
Then the girls from the tea club appear, and seeing the ring, they are surprised and explain to him that it not only means a marriage proposal, but also that his mother wants her to wear the ring, making the proto get nervous. The girls leave and Coco arrives, so our protagonist puts the ring in his jacket pocket, and they go to their club rehearsal. When they arrive, they find out that the former club members will also participate. Here, we see Yan is trying to talk to Rinda, but she is driven away by the club leader, who asks her to help the former members. At the end of the day, the boy and Coco are worried about their friend. Furthermore, the protagonist asks his girlfriend if she talked to Oka, and she tells him that every time she wants to talk to her about it, her friend leaves, but not to worry, they will talk later, and for now, he should focus only on the festival. The day of the festival arrives and Yanis goes to film, motivated by the crowd. He tells the proto that he will forget his feelings to film the best he can. Later, the protagonist and Rinda notice that Coco is not nervous, on the contrary, she is helping the former classmates who join so they won't be nervous. The festival begins and everyone starts dancing. Everything was going well until our boy regains his memory the day after graduation and he gets scared when he realizes he is at a dance when the last thing he remembers was being on a bridge. He then runs away and Rinda and Coco run after him. His friend finds him frightened, sitting in a corner, and when she mentions Coco, our proto remembers the dance, Coco, and everything else making him stand up because he wants to see her, but he is very nervous and scared because he thinks his old consciousness wants to take over his body again. In the night, the protagonist questions everything while organizing his thoughts. He is afraid because if he regains his memory, it means his current consciousness will disappear. At that moment, we see that he ended up taking all the p***s the doctor gave him. The next day, we see everyone in the club and the leader tells them that because they ruined the festival, the other clubs will not help them with costumes or music, including the university festival next month. The protagonist apologizes, but they tell him it's not his fault. So Rinda encourages them to work hard and do it on their own without the help of other clubs. As night falls, Coco is at the protagonist's house, and she scolds him for not sorting his trash properly, but she finds the empty package and keeps it. On the street, while they walk, he tells her he wants to start going for a run to help him sleep, and she, concerned, asks him what's wrong. She also mentions that she notices he's trying to escape. The protagonist gets angry and denies it, so they end up fighting. However, the proto tells her he's not running away, he's just scared of disappearing and feels bad for not telling Yanis and Oka anything. Then, Coco hugs him and tells him she's there for him to tell everyone, even though telling them everything is impossible, but being with her, he can conquer the world. The next day, we see the couple inviting their friends to a dinner at our boy's house, cooked by Coco. But when the protagonist invites Yanis, he starts helping him collect some leaves he needed, and that's when he encounters Oka, who treats him badly because she thinks the proto is the one that hurts Yanis. The protagonist confronts her behavior, but still invites her to eat, saying he will explain everything. She says she's not avoiding him, only that she feels she ruined her hair herself, and she leaves. In the afternoon, Oka arrives at the proto's place before everyone else and tells him that she was going to talk to him before the others arrived, but at the entrance, she met Rinda, so she started arguing with her, thinking she had something with our protagonist. But then Nana appeared, and Rinda told her that she was just visiting her friend. However, she got worried about Oka, and told her that if she wanted to talk, she could count on her. After this, Oka starts crying and apologizing for how she treated him. The protagonist tells her he understands because she thought he was cheating on her friend and his friend, but she denies it and says she feels bad because she thought it was her chance to be with Yanis, as he would be rejected. She explains why she cut her hair and how after that, she realized that she was actually in love with Yanis. Our boy tries to calm her down, and she asks him to record her so she can laugh about it later. As he turns on his camera, he tells her he will tell her everything before the others arrive, but at that moment, he remembers when Coco told him that telling them everything is impossible, causing him to regain his memory again. At that moment, he sees Oka in front of him, but he doesn't know who she is or where he is, so he gets scared and starts screaming, calling for Rinda. Oka goes to Nana's room and starts calling for Rinda to help her. The girls go to the protagonist's room, and when Rinda mentions Coco to call her, the proto becomes aware of everything and realizes what just happened. He becomes agitated, asking them not to tell Coco that he's fine now, but Nana s**ks him to calm him down. However, the protagonist gets up and runs away, leaving everyone scared. On the way while running, the proto starts thinking that it's best to disappear and forget everyone, including Coco, and that it's best if she forgets him too. Then, he meets Yanis, who is on his way home, so he starts chasing him when he sees the boy running away. Meanwhile, Yanis calls Takaya, who s**ks our boy, jumps on him, and s**ks him in the face and s**ks him unconscious. Once they are calm, the three friends start talking and even though the protagonist wants to tell them, he can't and starts crying. Takaya tells him they have an idea of what happened and if he can't talk about it now, he should just let it out. The protagonist tells them he's afraid of disappearing, so his friends tell him that if he disappears, they will find him, but Coco will find him first, making him laugh. When he returns home, he sees a message from Coco on his phone saying they had dinner at Nana's and that she won't ask any questions. 
The next day, Oka tells him that she didn't tell Coco anything because he asked them not to, but she did tell her that he ran away. Coco's response was, I see, so he ran away. Our Proda asks Oka to record him because he wants to have a memory of everything in case he gets lost. She starts recording and while he talks and says everything he really wanted to tell Coco, he is on his way to see her. When he finally arrives, ready to give her the ring and say everything he talked about in the video, Coco tells him she doesn't accept it and can't promise a future with him, and she leaves saying goodbye. When Coco leaves, the protagonist stays in the same spot thinking that she will come back, and if he moves and can't find her, everything will really end. Night falls and he remains there until he encounters Coco's father in his car. On the way, the boy realizes that it wasn't a coincidence, and that it was Coco who asked her father to pick him up. He starts to reproach her, thinking that she is pushing them apart. But Coco's father tells him that the protagonist never went to see her. He just waited for her to change her mind and come back for him, calling him complacent. Moreover, he tells him that his daughter asked him why people take making the proto realize that she knew about the p he was taking. When our protagonist gets out of the car, he meets Nana, who tells him they need to go inside before they get fried. But the protagonist refuses to enter and pretends to escape, but Nana stops him and says she will accompany him. After that, they start talking about our boy's fear of disappearing, and Nana tells him that Rinda told her about his a while ago, and she tells him he must survive, or he will make Coco suffer. This prompts the protagonist to tell her that Coco has already broken up with him. Nana gets angry with herself for ignoring him so much and she tells him she likes him a lot and that he can count on her for anything. She offers her hand and says she will treat him gently just for that day and advises him to talk to Coco and fix things tomorrow. The next day, the protagonist arrives at the university and meets Coco, who apologizes for yesterday's incident and talks to him normally, as if nothing had happened. This makes the protagonist believe that everything is fine between them and they haven't broken up. In the cafeteria, the four friends are together and Takaya tells our protagonist that he's glad to see him doing well. The protagonist tells him that he was apparently taking his incorrectly, and that's why it wasn't effective. When they return to their table, Takaya says that only the proto receives love, but at that moment, Coco tells everyone that they have broken up, leaving everyone, including the protagonist, surprised. The boy gets angry with her and starts to reproach her for her behavior a moment ago, making her believe that everything was fine. But Coco tells him she was just apologizing and that she still wants to be friends, and if he doesn't want that, then they can't be friends. Before she goes to class, she asks the protagonist if that doesn't bother him, but before she can continue, Yanis interrupts them, standing between the two and telling the protagonist not to pay attention, as he knows Coco talks nonsense. However, Coco gets angry and starts telling everyone that if they meddle again, she will distance herself from them. She heads to her classes, but not before telling the proto that if he's bothered to see her in the classroom, he should tell her because she doesn't care about attendance at the university or the people at school, and she throws a cup of coffee before leaving. Yanas and Oka go after her, leaving only Takaya with the protagonist, who is devastated, so he asks his friend to go to class and leave him alone. When Takaya leaves, Oka appears, showing him what her camera recorded the day he remembered everything, and they see how Coco returned to her room and saw the recording, which is the real reason they broke up. Our boy tells Oka he used the recording from the previous day, however, she wants and asks her to record again, trying to cheer her up, although he also starts to cry. Oka reminds him that they are in the same club, making him even more de but he finishes recording, pretending to Suddenly, we see him entering the club room and talking to the leader and Rinda, explaining that he won't let Coco leave and that he will quit instead. Coco goes and starts yelling at him while him, asking why he gives up on her so easily, but he tells her they got tired of him and pushes her back. She continues yelling that he never considered her feelings, while he reproaches her for rejecting him on the bridge. So she jumps on him, him while saying that she did go there but arrived too late, asking to go back to that moment so she wouldn't miss that opportunity. Just then, her leader holds her back and Yanis enters the room, so our protagonist explains what happened to them and apologizes, as well as Rinda, who apologizes for being the cause of all of it. Yana starts reprimanding them when suddenly Coco enters, presenting her resignation. However, the protagonist snatches it from her hands, so Coco leaves the room angry, with the proto chasing her and Rinda crying on the floor. The protagonist follows Coco outside the university, where he returns her club resignation letter and tells her that she shouldn't quit, that the club is important to her, and that he can't be in the same place where he is. She replies that it is important, and that's why she gives it to him, and that she is the one who can't be in the same place since she didn't even go to class. The protagonist admits that he didn't attend class because he felt unwell, and he tells her that he understands why she broke up with him and accepts it, as he knows that at some point his memories will return, and the current memories will disappear. She then tells him that she couldn't bear it, so they decide to remain friends and crying, Coco asks him to promise not to forget her, to which he promises. Then Rinda comes running and tells them that Yan has left and she couldn't catch up to him. She speaks loudly to Coco, saying that she won't take care of our boy because she will disappear, that she can't dispose of other people, and not to underestimate her, leading them to return to the club room. 
They go back into the room and Coco tears up her resignation, returning everything to normal. That night, the protagonist goes to Yana's house to talk to him, but he doesn't find him, so he leaves a note on his door. The next day, he finds that his friend returned the same note and stuck it on his door, indicating that he doesn't want to talk to him. With only two days left until the university festival, Coco sees our protagonist in the cafeteria, but when she approaches to talk to him, she realizes that he doesn't remember her, so she leaves crying. Takaya sees this, and unlike the protagonist, recognizes Coco. So he reproaches him for making her cry, but our proto explains that he didn't see her, that's why he didn't greet her. Later, we can see Takaya with Oka, and he asks her to tell him what she knows, but she doesn't want to say much, so she calls the boys and plans to have a meeting to talk to everyone, because she feels that if they continue like this, they will drift apart. Coco commits to bringing Yanis even if he doesn't speak to the protagonist. Night falls, and the proto says goodbye to Rinda, inviting her to the meeting, but she declines, telling him that he should recover his friends. Suddenly, the protagonist forgets what he was doing and where he was. Then Coco arrives with Yanis, but our protagonist doesn't recognize them and becomes frightened, so he starts shouting and runs away, looking for Rinda. Suddenly, he arrives at a building and realizes he's in Tokyo, getting extremely scared. Rinda appears and takes him to her apartment in a taxi, while they are in the vehicle. Rinda talks on the phone saying she knew about the protagonist all along and that she will sleep at Nana's place. Then our boy sees Coco crying and remembers wanting to get off, but Rinda stops him, and he forgets again what he was doing. Back in his room, the protagonist calls his mom, asking her to take him to the hospital because he's regaining his memory and forgetting the present. His mother says she will go the next day, and he invites her to the university festival. The next day, the protagonist wakes up and sees Nana next to him, so he gets scared and screams, and Rinda rushes in. Our proto sees her, and tells her he slept with Nana. But she hits him, and they explain that since he didn't wake up, Rinda sent Nana to check if he was okay. But she found him so comfortable, she lay down beside him. When they leave, the boy says goodbye to Nana and thanks her for everything she helped him with, but she tells him they will see each other at the festival. However, the protagonist feels that after the festival, he will remember everything and forget everything in the present, so he has already given up his room. At the university, Rinda and the proto arrive, and Coco greets them, already dressed up. We can see our boy struggling not to forget who he is. Once in the classroom, everyone is ready to leave, dressed in black because they don't have costumes. At that moment, Yanis and Oka arrive, bringing along several guys, including the president of the Council of Private Universities, who saw the recordings of his friend and agreed to help them again, bringing suits and instruments. The protagonist apologizes to Yanis, but he tells him that Coco explained everything to him, and that now he found him that he had lost him, but found him again, just as he promised, and that he will never let him get lost again. Everyone is excited and starts dancing at the festival, and while they do, the protagonist feels himself gradually forgetting everything until, in the end, he becomes who he was before and the person he was after the disappears. At the end of the dance, our protagonist approaches his mother and takes her hands, telling her that he has returned. This is seen by Coco and Rinda, and Rinda tells Coco that he has regained his memory. Then, we see Oka's recordings from when she cut her hair until when she recorded our boy pretending to because Coco broke up with him, and we see that the group of friends were the ones watching it. Yanis tells them that the proto left with his mother and Rinda because he no longer remembers them. He also returned the broken mirror that Coco gave him. Coco looks at the mirror and starts crying, just like the rest of the group. Days pass, and we see the protagonist running as he passes by the bridge where he had the Feeling cold, he puts his hands in his jacket pockets and his mother's ring falls into the river. He tells us that he has lost important things, submitted a document to the university to suspend his studies, and thinks he won't return. He has also seen many notes he wrote about his life when he didn't have his memories like about his girlfriend. He wonders how her face is, but in the end, he gives up as he doesn't want to remember the face of the person who broke up with him. Then beside Coco's makeup mirror, he finds his email and password among the notes. Upon checking it, he finds countless unread emails, and he also discovers an outgoing email from him to Coco, dated the day before, saying they should meet before Christmas, because he still has feelings for her. December 24 arrives, and Rinda comes to the Proto's house to spend Christmas Eve. While they are eating and talking, he tells her that he is still in love with Coco, and those feelings never change, although he is still waiting for her answer since the bridge incident. However, he thinks that since she acts as usual, and doesn't even tell him what happened at the university, her answer is no. At that moment, someone knocks on the door, and when he goes to see who it is, he realizes it's Coco. The protagonist doesn't recognize her and confuses her with Oka, but she accepts it, telling him that she wore turn DVD she borrowed from him. Our boy thanks her, and Rinda appears behind her. She sees Coco, and is surprised when the protagonist calls her Oka, because she understands that she is pretending to be someone she is not. Rinda wants to invite Coco inside, but as it's not her house, she can't. Coco says it doesn't matter and that she's leaving, but before leaving, she makes our protagonist to look inside her bag, and there he finds the makeup mirror, which was his. But since he doesn't recognize it, he returns it to Coco, telling her it's not his. She holds it but shows him the love words he had written in the gift, causing something in him. 
Before leaving, Coco asks Sin how to get to the bridge where the accident happened, and the proto explains and apologizes since, without his parents there, he can't take her by car. She says it doesn't matter and proceeds to leave. After that, our protagonist enters his house and checks his belongings, finding a makeup mirror he had hidden, and tells Rinda that it's not his. Upon opening the mirror, he manages to remember his broken one, and thus he regains his memory completely. He immediately rushes to look for Coco, but on the way he falls and Rinda, who is running after him, throws him some sneakers she gave him, telling him that's why she gave them to him. He thanks her and proceeds to put them on and run again. When he arrives at the bridge, the atmosphere becomes cloudy again, and we see the entire bridge starting to move, preventing him from advancing. Then the ghostly proto appears, and they realize they can communicate. The ghost blames him for everything that happened when he didn't listen to him, and we see how he starts to fade away. However, our protagonist tells him that they will all go to the same place, and that's when Rinda appears and hugs the protagonist of the past, telling him that the answer she was going to give him on the day of the was a yes, that she loves him and loves everything about him. Finally, the ghostly boy disappears, satisfied because he finally got the answer, but before doing so, he returns his mother's ring. Then we see that Rinda sees the protagonist and tells him that if he loves everything about him, he should also love everything about Coco, so he must go and be with her. Meanwhile, she will go to give another yes, and she runs away. The fog begins to disappear, and our protagonist sees Coco from behind. So he calls her by her name and runs to hug her. She realizes that he didn't forget her, and she tells him that she loves him and immediately asks if he forgot the promise, to which he replies that he didn't, and that he loves her too. Therefore, they will be together again. He finally gives his mother's ring to her. Both return to the protagonist's house. In the meantime, we are told that the one who sent the emails was Takaya, as he was trying to make his friend return to Tokyo. And this caused Koko and him to fight, until he reminded her that if she loves him, she can do everything to make him come back, which made her want to look for the protagonist. Then we see what was in the DVD Coco brought. In the video, our proto talks about how he should stay with Coco, and why. Then in the video, he asks the future him to thank Coco, and tell her he loves her in person. Therefore, the protagonist thanks her for being there, and this concludes the story.